Oh, hello, and welcome to my mess. Um, I'm going to try to do things similar to these. Um, and then maybe even finish these. I don't know. They're not quite finished. So I'll do some traditional red and blue. I'm going to red and green, and then this one I want to do with some blues. So I've got, this is from Tim Holtz, I believe. Yeah, I know it's Tim Holtz. It's like the wallpaper kind of a deal, which I might want to do on this one. And then I've got Christmas letters, which is also blue, which I thought I would... I mean, it's not going to show in the end, so some of it will get covered. And I grabbed some of my gel plates, gel plate prints that were on regular thickness paper. Oops, in hopes of using those. So, it's not quite the same blue, but probably doesn't matter. <laughs> or I could use a little red just to get something else going here. Look at this. A little on the shiny side. Could do that. Or I didn't think this through ahead of time, did I? This is um get out a little green. Blue and green. I just kind of like the blue roses that are there. You know what? We're not going to overthink it. We're just going to put it down. Where did my glue go? I picked it off off the floor earlier. Couldn't have gone too far. Here it is. Oh my goodness gracious. So this is from this book page from um, a book called Chatterbox. I think that one was Chatterbox. It's like the Chatterbox one if it's not Chatterbox. And it has like blue letters instead of like the regular black, which is kind of cool. So I'm using Art Glitter Glue because I need it to stick really good. And I'm going to be doing, you know, different layers and stuff and really messing with the uh, integrity of the paper that I'm doing down. So I want to go ahead and use a good strong and quick drying glue because you know I don't want to wait a while for it to uh is that straight it's fairly straight for it to dry either and then let's get a little bit of this roses on here that's going to overlap the paper so I'm just oh I'm just overlapping I'm just um Yep, just collaging some papers. Some of them I just did one piece. Um, I didn't show you them, did I? Some I did three, some I did two. Like this one I did two. So there's like music paper and that sweater paper that Dreams Etc. has. And this one I had two pieces of, uh, so this one I cut so you can kind of see the line where I cut it. In front, you know, through the bird, but there was some from Took's craft table from her. Um, I'm not sure if it was the nostalgic. I think it was the nostalgic Christmas. Have a good day. This one I had some plaid that was from Dreams, etc., and another piece. So that one I just did two pieces. This one I think I had book page. Then I had a digital that had like some script and some music page back there. This one, I just did a piece of plaid. That's all behind there, and that's rice paper in front of there. This one, I had a piece from Took's Craft Table and a piece from Dreams, etc. that was plaid. And this one, I had that digital that had some script and um, postage and stuff. And then there's some music page and book page. So you can still see it just a little bit in the background. And this one also has the music page and a little bit of that digital that had the script in that and some book page. And then you can kind of see where I've done the, I don't know if you can or not, should be able to, the heat embossing. So we're going to let this dry. And I will cover, um, I'll do four 
each one of each shape for the video. So let's see. Look at the heart. Where I had music page. I had music page. Of course I did. Mm, we'll just do some of this book page. And something else. Let's see what we have. I know, don't you hate that noise? Still not as bad as a fork. Oh, my husband, oh my goodness, he drives me crazy with the fork. Scraping it on the bottom of the bolt. Oh, it drives me insane. Um, let's see. It has like some nice grunginess in the corner over here. That will cover the other side. Maybe I'll put a little music on the bottom. We'll see. That's not going to have much on there. Anyway. All right, let's get the glue on there before it dries. That'd be nice. I mean, get the paper on there before the glue dries. You know, words, words, they just, I mean, they're just words. They can be a little bit difficult to, to, to do, though. To do. Words are hard. Just face it, words are hard. A little bit more of this paper. And what else? I did that green. Oh, why did I grab those out? They're not. Oh, there we go. I think it's these are. One of the ones that were on regular plain, plain paper. And so some jelly plate print, which I think would be fun in the background there. I'm just going to glue it down and cut around. Let's see what I cut off. Oh my goodness. Wasn't this just working? Really? I've had the cover off for how long? I haven't paused. <laughs> it's not been that long. It just wants to give me trouble. So far, the art glitter glue seems to be working. Oh, and um, Lori, my friend Lori asked me if I could cut through this with a big bite. Um, I could actually cut through it with the the regular uh, crocodile. Not even the big bite. I didn't even try the big bite. I tried the crocodile first. I tried the one that's um made for cutting through really thick stuff, and then I was like, well, let me try the pink one, and I was shocked. That it cut through it so if you have wood shapes that don't have holes and you wanted to turn them into ornaments you could just put a hole in it or you could get um, a bale which I was going to show you what they look like but I'm going to get to that point I will because I'm not sure where that bag went oh here it is so a bale is just one of those things that's like it's flat on one side and it has a hook on it and then you just use some E6000 and glue it on the back or the front I'm not sure I always I glue mine backwards because they don't make sense I don't I don't want them to show so I didn't quite understand why they were like that but you know all right and I tend to like these like this so Ooh, Newfoundland dog. Let's see. Go ahead and get this piece glued on and figure out what else I want to do on there. Oops. Guess we're not going over quite as far as I thought. There we go. I had some music page once. I like music page for it. I see the only problem I had when I was using the um the digitals yesterday is well some of you know what the problem would be with that. <laughs> it's just that um it sometimes will run when you get it wet because I have an inkjet. So 
the colors, especially the reds and browns, are more likely to run away. All right, just one more little piece. I was thinking music paper. I was thinking music paper, and Joel had brought me my music paper, and then I stacked stuff on top of the music paper. So maybe I'll do a little bit of this plaid paper here, or not. I mean, the only thing with plaid in a weird shape is it's plaid in a weird shape. How about some sweater? I meant to cut the other one. That's why it feels weird. <laughs> I'm cutting like uh, I was cutting. It was weird. It felt weird. It was weird. Totes weird. I just want the sweater part. For the most part. I don't mind if some of that sweater shows. Guess we're gonna go. Along the bottom there with the sweater. Yeah. All right, I'll pause while I cut these out. You don't need to see that. It does help to have precision scissors because I can get right up to the edge of the. Anybody know where I put them? Because it's what I do. I th I'm gonna have to like look at the video to see what I did. With you. <laughs> they're oh they're all oh, makes it hard to find when you uh just cover them like that. That's ridiculous. Oh, I had some other of these I was going to try to. Oh, well, here it is. Because they don't look like shapes, so that makes it harder to find. So, because I use my precision scissors, they have like a narrow, um, it's like really narrow right there. So, I can get right up to the edges. But if I can't get up right up to the edges, it's okay too. Once I cut them out, I just go ahead and sand around the edges. So, I just, from the back... Just get as close as I can cutting them. It's best to wait till the dry glue dries, but you know, sometimes we're impatient. And then I take my nail file, which looks disgusting. Don't look at it. I was gonna stop at the dollar store today and see if I could find some, but then I didn't. And it's best to go down like that, but Sometimes I go like that. <laughs> Sometimes I don't do what I say is the best thing to do. Because I just want it to be fast sometimes. Yeah, this is why it's best to go down. because you, Especially if you have brittle paper. But if you're going for kind of a uh, an aged look anyway, it won't matter if a little bit comes off. Because our next layer is going to be gesso anyway. So I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm going to take some gesso. I know, it's a mess. This is like all the other space on my desk. It's stressful for some people I know. It's not very stressful for me. A little bit, not too bad. But I got my mixed media mat, so I can just put my paint right on the thing, and then I'll probably put my hand in it five times. So now I'm just going to do a layer of gesso. Um... So you, for most of these, I just used a paintbrush and just just did a layer of brush, a layer of gesso. Like with these, I might get a little bit more texture just by using my palette knife. But you could also use a credit card. You can use a brush. You can use your fingers. I don't like how this is coming out, so I'm going to change to something else. Um. thing is, I forgot to put my brush in the water yesterday, which actually will be fine too, because it's just going to make it really a lot rougher. Like, uh, not rough. Well, the brush is rougher, so I'm going to have like rough lines. But I want the background to go, I want, I want the background to be the background. Does that make sense? So I want it to go into the background. Also, I want like a base. So that no matter what I do on this, it's covered. It's all gonna 
I don't know. It's what I do. It's just my next step. I collage, I cut it out, and then I paint over it. <laughs> With the cut with the gesso, and I got more gesso than I need. Let's see, what if I take the well, that has lines on it too, though. Yep. I just kind of wanted to not have so many lines, so I'm just kind of blotting out my lines now, giving it more of a. I did that with another one yesterday, I think. There, less, less liney. And I'll have to remember that this one's this way. Well, it doesn't have to be. Sometimes the words can be sad. Just, and also, if you have some uh, sticking up there, just stick some gesso under it. And Martha says that the gesso is like glue. So but you can kind of treat it like glue. I'm just gonna take my towel and dab it back up paint it on dab it up but you can see the difference it makes in pushing it back and turning it into more of a background so that's just a really quick process there and now I'm gonna dry these and I will not make you listen to me dry them I'm going to go ahead and use my heat gun just so that they can dry faster. If you didn't have a heat gun or you weren't in a hurry, you could go ahead and just let them dry. For this next step, you're definitely going to want permanent ink. Which is why I got the stays on because even the archival inks that have red move. It's really annoying. Although I think on this one, I'm probably, I have this uh, Seafarer, which is close to this teal that's here. And I tend to want to stay on the outside edges if I think that I'm going to do like uh, something in the middle, you know. Um, but I can always add a little bit of gesso wherever my focal point is going to end up. So that's not a big deal either. But for now, I just, like that one, is just around the edges. A little stronger than I might have normally done, but that's okay. And for the next one, what do I want to do? Uh, let's see, I could do stamps or I could do... I'll get a stronger impression if I use a stamp. I just had my... Here they are. <laughs> I just had these. I was thinking about doing something like that on here in red. Get that the roses because I have green and blue. Let's see. That's kind of got the flowery floral. Let's try it. Fingers crossed. I mean, I tested this out on this to see that it was kind of a dark red, even though it looks pink to me on that. Create side swatch labels for stacked pads. Oh, they, that's nice. My last ones did not give me that. And I know I should probably test this out. But you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm kind of pushing lighter on that side. Alright, it does look a little bit on the pink side, doesn't it? Might have done it. No, that's upside right. I'm going to do a little bit up there and a little bit there. Maybe even a little bit in the corners. I don't know. <sighs> but just because it looks like that now doesn't mean it's going to look like that when we're done. All right, let's try this one. Go back to the Seafarer. Just feel safer. <laughs> doing this upside down but that's okay sometimes I forget where I want to do it but somehow it always ends up being the right place I don't I don't know how all right so then there's that one and then on this one let's try the 
Right. <laughs> Just clean some of that off with that. Um, 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 um. Do I want to do it with this? I don't know. It may end up looking more pink. Oh, plus it's going to have some of the red I had on here yesterday, but. Just kind of getting the ink off of my. It's <laughs> one way to clean it, right? Look at that. All that I'm getting off of there. All right, that was a really juicy part of the reason. It's fairly red. That's the difference between when I brushed it on and when I stamped it on. Definitely not clear up there, oh my word. Well, and I didn't dry it, which is why it's... Okay, we definitely got some red on here now, don't we? Let me dry my inks real quick with my heat dryer, which I had 10 seconds ago. Here we go. I'm pause. All right, I'm going to try and do some other stamping on this. Over the red. So that it doesn't look like, I don't know, blood. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll just put one in each corner, maybe. I don't know how this one's going to end up. Depends what napkin we find, I guess. And I found my Christmas napkins. Yay! Alright. Today. So, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Ooh. Got these gold snowflakes. But also, I could do, like, oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to, for sure. So, what I could do, which would fix this a lot, go a long way to fix this one, is do, like, a holly background and do, like, maybe a fussy cut bird on the front is a possibility. Um, I also have some other, other backgrounds, too. Let's see if I can get this off of here. Oh my goodness, my fingers don't want to cooperate. That's nice, people. Honk your horns nice and loud for all the world to hear. Ooh, two layers at once. Nice. Okay. All right. And actually, what I might do is just... I don't know what I might do. Maybe I'll just go over the whole thing and then put something on the... Let's see what that looks like. Sure, why not? All right, put the paintbrush back in there and grab out the glue brush, which I did remember to put in the water yesterday. So it should be, I don't know why, but I prefer the white brush for um, decoupage, glue and whatnot. I had, oh my word, here it is. And I'm using fluid matte medium, um, I was, or, or uh, gel matte medium. It's also sometimes called. So I'm just gonna do that whole napkin over there. See what happens. Hey, at least this time, since I dried it first, we don't have a lot of movement of the the red once I had it, once I dry, you know, made sure it was dry and whatnot. I'm not necessarily finding the busiest part of the napkin either. And then if you decoupage it with the wet glue, like the either a um, Mod Podge or the gel matte medium, you're gonna see through it. If you just use glue stick, you're not going to have it protected as much, which is fine if you're using it like on a page in a book or on a tag or whatever, maybe. But on for like an ornament, you're going to want it protected. So you can still see some of the pink is in my brush from yesterday. And then I want to let that dry before I try to take the edges off of that. Although I can make my edges smaller. 
you would think anyway. Okay, let's redo that quarter a little bit. If it rips, I don't mind. I'll just put a little gesso on there. So if you don't like it, there's still more steps to get it to where you hopefully will like it. Let's, where's my glue? My glue doesn't have a cover. Where's, oh great, there it is. My art glitter glue doesn't have a top on it and it's just any which way I found it, put the cover on it. All right. Let's try one of my gingerbread people. And the ornaments. <laughs> Let's put ornaments on the ornament. That's fine. Well, also, I like this plaid as well. I'm just kind of, I rub the edge. Sometimes I have to go to a um, piece of tape. But sometimes I just kind of smooth the edges, the corners. I can do it. I don't know. This is painful to watch, isn't it? Well, there's one layer. Probably got to take the tape out for the next one. And no, I don't know where I have regular tape. So I just use... <laughs> so I just use this sticky note and hope for the best. It's not as sticky as regular tape. But generally it gets the job done. On some of the other ones that I showed you that I made yesterday, I had some rice paper that I used. So some were rice paper and some were napkins. Let's see. Is she going to fit on there? She has a bow on her head. Quite a large bow. Okay. I'm just going to put her all the way on there and then cut around her. So I need to get this good and wet. My words are upside down. That's good to know now. If that's important to you, you might want to pay attention. Really, it's going to hardly matter in the end. But, but you know, you do you. I want her to the right as much as I can so that she shows. I'm moving. The, I'm like, why is she not moving to the edge? Because the whole thing is moving. I think that'll work. All right, you can't see me, but I'm trying to go out to the edges, let's see. Not too worried, I have plenty of these napkins, so. I think I still do. Hmm. Sold quite a few too. <laughs> Cause they're so cute. So the words show behind her. Not a lot shows behind on this side. So I could just take this in a little bit. Like not have the cookie on there maybe. I don't want to take off her whole. Oh, let's see. I want her all the way on that side. And... I'm going to use my fingernail here just to get but what fingernail I have anyway just to kind of get along the line so I can get there we go kind of a and I'm going to rub here so that some on and some off all right good and we're going to let that dry and then I will file around the edges What's next? Okay, see, I don't recognize these after they're like off to the side doing weird things. All right, we'll set you there. We'll set you near there or over here. It's just dangerous, isn't it? I um, wonder if this is too big. Okay. Am I still in frame? I am. <gasps> it's like magic. What other ones do I have? I know I have some with birds on them. I've got the snowman. Uh, Christmas tree, which... Christmas tree doesn't make as much sense to me to put on a tree. <laughs> a snowman, maybe. I also have these. 
Nope, they're not the right color. They're totally green and red. So I'm more looking for... Oh, where are the napkins I had yesterday? That would be helpful so I didn't have to open up a whole new napkin. Because I had the bluebirds, which would work on one of these really well. These, these blue... These, well, they're not bluebirds. They're on blue, and they have a blue scarf. I guess they're not actually bluebirds. So how is everybody doing? Did I even ask you? I don't think that I did. Ugh. I just need to get some tape for my desk. That's what I need to do. Just get a tape dispenser on my desk. Alright, now this is probably like a Dollar Tree one because it just had the one layer and then it just has like the one square. Although it does have um, this little bit here. So I could... But if I wanted gold, I could do that. I, don't, I might just do this silver corner over here. And then if I want to put something over that, I can. Okay. Yes, we do not like straight edges. It's just we being most of the people that decoupage with napkins or rice paper. It's just we like more organic look, I guess. There are some cases where I will cut is like I, like yesterday I had like the belly of a of a um bird that was really close to some other things I wanted to cut off. So I just cut around his belly cuz he was going to be over other stuff anyway. Well, that hardly shows. But hopefully if somebody looks at it closely, they'll be able to be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. There's some texture back there. Whatever. Now, I think I had some... Where's the package? Of the rice paper it would be nice. Well, I could pause you and not make you look for it. Here. That would be like a smart thing. Here's some of the napkins I used yesterday though. Here's him. He's like a nice bright red, which would pop. We have a little bit of red over here. And he would pop nicely. So I could put the tree there and cut him out separate. This might be the only shape he'll actually fit on. I might have to cut off a little bit of his tail. We'll see. So this is what I had to do yesterday because some of my stuff was just too small to fit the animal the way it was looking at the tree. Yes, I am putting trees on the ornaments that are going on the tree. Just realized that. <laughs> so this is rice paper. And I'm saving um, the white part. All that white part. That's a lot of white part. So I'm saving it so that I can stamp on it and use it on something use like and see how that works thought it might be cool to do that okay he's really big compared to that tree that tree has got to be like back there somewhere it's like the proportion is really off <laughs> so he's up here looking and that should be like back I don't know. I don't know about him. I don't know about that bird. Unless we just do the bird with something else. Or we could put the tree behind him. That tree or the scenery tree. Which is a little bit more in keeping with. Let's try that. Let's see. See this? Oh, I think I like the wintry tree. Hmm. Who knew? Now you've seen how my brain works. It doesn't. That's all. I'm, I'm just going ahead and putting the matte medium over the whole thing because it'll help protect it too. Because it's just paper on there. You know? Paper and so so I figure if I go ahead and 
cover the whole thing, it kind of protects the whole thing. This was my first time, um, when I did this the other day, it was my first time. Are you straight enough? No, you're not straight. Stop acting like you're straight. I mean, you don't have to be straight. I don't care. But on my ornament, I want you straight directionally. <laughs> All right, yeah, I like, that's kind of cool. I don't know. What do you, whoops, what do you think? And so when I do a little bit of heat embossing, I might put something here and like here and maybe, I don't know, three places, but here is like blank. So I would definitely want to put something there. So these need to dry and then I'll be back. So like I said before, I'm going to use my nail file and I'm just coming down like that. Sometimes I get impatient and I go like that, but... From what I've heard, the best way is to kind of go down on the edge like that. And that will help get it off of there if you want it neat. If you're like me and you don't need it neat, you can just go faster and do what you like. And then if I want to rough up my edges a little bit, I just kind of come from the angle here and just kind of go like down like that. Because I don't want to totally rip up my napkin, but if I want a little bit of the napkin to come off, that's what I would do. And it just kind of, like there's that little bit of green leaf. Maybe I don't want that there, so I can just totally, oh, totally take it way down to the wood if I'm not careful. It's all right. All right, so that one, this one just had that little bit of napkin on it. That one is all in the middle, so I don't have to worry about the edges. I don't think there's napkin on that side either, just this bottom. There we go. Cut that off on the bottom. So we have our gingerbread girl that looks like she's in the water with all these black things <laughs> rising up. Rising up. Okay. This one needs a focal point. This one needs a focal point. I mean, I don't know. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if I have some printables that I could use. Or a stamp. What do I do with a stamp? Where are, not these stamps. Where do my Christmas stamps go? I'm going to have this one, but I'm like, where'd Santa Claus go? Don't know. Okay. I think I decided on him for this, but he is a snowman. He's supposed to be white. I don't mind a little bit of words behind him, but the green has to go. So we're going back into our gesso here and going to try to lighten up where the, oops, that's more gesso than I want. <laughs> Stuck my finger in there. And, and like I said before, gesso is like a glue. So I can just go right over this with the, um, all right, I don't want it to be like, so obvious that it's a snowman shape though. I just kind of want see I can kind of put that other stuff in the background a little bit more now too. We've got a little bit of bumping going on here. It's a little bit of a uh, we're gonna think of that as texture. Probably should put the cover on this before I make a mess with it. I say that but I need this a little bit thicker. So I might have to like let it dry and then go over it again. We'll see. We're just kind of just his face him. Put him up a little bit higher. How's that? Whoops. I'm not supposed to go in a circle with a napkin. Just tell you right now, <laughs> that's never what you want to do. A little bit more weight back there. There we go. Oops, got a wrinkle. 
we've got a few wrinkles. This is the wrinkly one. Most deaf. What's nice about when you're working with napkins, though, you can just grab the bag of a napkin from the side and wipe your finger. All right, there's still some green showing through, but it's not terrible. All right, so I've seen it all right a million times. Well, now I need to figure out where I put the glue. Right here, in front of me, next to me, really close. So if I can lift that, I will carefully lift that and get some of the gel matte medium under there. And where it was a little bit thicker with gesso, I think we're okay. The gesso should act like a glue. And yeah, like I said, if, if something didn't come out the way you hoped, gesso. Just add some gesso and another layer or two or three. <gasps> Don't rip his face. Oh, I ripped his face. Hold on. <laughs> Don't rip his face. I have another one. All right. Oh my goodness. This is poor, poor. Now he's going to face the other way. I want to put a little, oh, that's not, now I need to go back to the gesso. See, it's not all perfection and everything goes perfectly right the first try around here or anywhere. It's trial and error always. Um, just, it's, yeah, always trial and error. Right. Mm. Another back of a napkin or a piece of a back of a napkin. gonna glue the whole thing down and hope for the best. After I did that, just wiped up all of my gesso that I needed right there, but I don't want it a circle, that's the problem. But you know, it's just gonna have to probably be a circle. And I'll be more gentle this time. So much more gentle, hmm, she says. She hopes. I think I have a, a better layer of glue under this this time too, though. So hopefully. Does anybody remember what color this started as? Didn't this start with like a hope for some blue? All the blue is gone. All the blue is gone. That's not the tune at all. So you don't know what song I'm singing. Because <laughs> I'm making up the words anyway. So I might as well make up the tune too. It's not what you came for, I know. You came for, I don't know what you came for. Mixed media. That's what you're getting. It's a mix. It's a mess. All right. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about doing him. The problem with him is um, I, he doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. Or if he does, I lose quite a lot of them and then there's a lot of heart left over. So, I'm going to have to figure out what to do down at the bottom of the heart to get him situated there. So, I don't want to put him right in the middle of, and it's a printable, so I'm probably going to totally, should have used art glitter glue is what I should have done. Let's do that. Okay, covers on, no, covers not on my gesso. Now the cover's on my gesso, art glitter glue. Because now my bear is like yellow. Well, you know, polar bears, they really are more yellow than we realize. I think that's what I heard once somewhere in a lullaby. Don't know why I was thinking I could take this thick resume type cotton paper and do that with it. All right, fingers crossed I don't totally ruin it. And this foot's not gonna make it on there, but that's okay, he's so cute. And there's just that one little bit right there that I might have a flower or something I could put there. No, not the bead or a button. 
But I do have some little white flowers that I could put a little cluster or something there, maybe. But he has to dry first, doesn't he? I'm still here. All right, I have this Hickory Smoke Archival Ink, and I have my little tiny words, which I think go this way. <laughs> So I'm just going to kind of like add a little bit of script here and there. Oh, like down. All right. I did add a little gesso down there to hope in hopes of a uh, kind of, um, you know, hiding that a little bit. I don't think I want to go over him with the script. But I want to go around him with some, even though there's already some, um, even though there's the book page, I still did a little bit of script on there. Just adds, because you can't even tell it's script because it's so small. It actually kind of just looks like lines almost. Oh, it's so small and I don't know where my other one is it has a little bit more flourish to it let's see I'm just kind of oh is that? ah here we go oh I found Santa Claus so ooh this might be perfect for doing the gold embossing that I want to do. So where? Right, let's see if it does any. Uh, so this is a Ranger embossing ink pad. Fingers crossed. I was using the Distress one earlier. Also, I need a piece of paper. And uh, over there and over here and I actually might do silver this time because I think silver would work better on this one or white would have worked as well oh <laughs> apparently the ink from the Oh my goodness. Okay. So the ink was still wet from the the words and I can't tell where anything went. So what do you do when that happens? You just wipe the whole thing off. Dry it away from your embossing ink. Just drying the ink so I can put new ink on there and not have the... Uh, embossing powder stick all over so that's all all right let's try that again lesson learned or maybe i'll no oh, let's still do it where did my I just need to find the stamp i just had here it is okay it's just like little snowflakey things that's what i was thinking that maybe Still, just went everywhere. It's just all silver, all in the corners. What the? I could see some spots. All right. Kind of want to blow on it, but you don't want to do that when you have other embossing powder sitting there. Oh, who knows what little piece of something just went in there? Cover? Cover might be nice. Just stuck my finger right in it. All right, well, we'll see what it looks like when it gets all shiny. It's gonna be noise, just warning you.
one is definitely giving me headaches. And now I'm like, I put him, um, where am I going to put the hole? Because his hat is like right where the hole is probably going to go. But that's okay. I can put a bale on him instead if I need to. Or I could put um, something across here. Like glue or glue the, the ribbon on the back maybe. I'll figure something out. So that's what that one looks like right now. Or I could super seal it and it can become a coaster. Who knows? Who knows at this rate? What's going to happen? All right. I need a different piece of paper that's not covered in gold now or silver, whatever. These probably need silver too, but oh my goodness. This one I would definitely want to do some gold on. I was thinking about doing some lines in gold. Let's see. Just doing a little bit like that and that. And I said gold, right? Gold glory. These are from Stampin' Up. Gone from my friend who got them who knows how long ago. They sat in her house for a long time. Then they sat in my house for a while. And now they get used. There we go. That'll be cool. So we have a little bit of... Oh, that's crooked. Mm. <laughs> it should not bother me that much. Except it's not junk journaling. That's a thing. This is ornaments for people. It has to be more, more perfect. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Except for, now it's just going to be a gold corner of stuff because it wasn't dried completely. And double lines. Hey, but it's straight now. All right. I don't have to heat it up right away. Uh, once the stuff is on there, it'll pretty much stay on there until you heat it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this gold stuff back in. And then decide if I want gold or, oh, I also have some navy blue. I got some white too if I want to do something with white. What do we think? He needs something over here. Do you think that stuff is dry yet? Just embossing powder everywhere. That's just it. This is just everywhere. Where? is should we try these again our little snowflakey things maybe try them on the on here i don't know i really don't know gold glory sterling silver We'll see. This is not going as smoothly as it did. Well, I didn't get to this part on, um, there we go. That's perfect. Okay. Good. I didn't get to this point when I did the live on Sunday. I just got to, which tells me that before I finish the ones from Sunday, I might want to wait until I'm not having such a bad heat embossing kind of a day. <laughs> just saying. Should I do gold on this one? I might do gold. I want to see what the gold will look like. With the teal and the red. Little gold bits. And maybe a little bit more down here. Hopefully I didn't just move it when I did it. Okay, now we've got little little bits like we're supposed to have and not lines of it. Okay. 
ready to see the magic that happens when we heat it up. It's more magic with the metallics than the other. Gonna have sound. I mean, you know, loud sound. It's not super loud because you can still hear me over it, but you know, in case anybody gets bothered by the sound, they can mute it. We've got a star on that one. I love that. I love when it changes. I don't know if you can see it changing or not. Maybe not burn my hand would be good. Ow. <laughs> Didn't I say don't burn my hand? Look, there's tiny little scars in there. Alright. And then I will see I'm glad I didn't put her right in the middle. So if I want to put a hole up there, it's not gonna be right in the middle of her head. But I'll need to put a smaller string. Hmm. If I can put her so she hangs at an angle. No, oh, she needs to hang straight. We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. He can hang at an angle for sure. Probably there, somewhere around there. All right, I'll show you that it worked. Let's see. I'm going to use the small one. And I'm just going to make sure I'm in far enough so that I don't split the wood here somewhere. And look, it went through it. It's crazy. It's just crazy pants because the wood is just not very thick, apparently. Now, I don't have the eyelets that go all the way through. So if I use an eyelet, it's basically going to just, I'll have, to, so if I want to use an eyelet, I will have to put some glue on it for it to stay in. It's basically what it would be about. So let's see, this one, you can do gold. So I would put, mm, well, I have some jewelry gold that would probably work better, but also, let me make sure this will fit in there because some of the wood started to split. There we go. Will it come back out? Well, that's in there pretty good because the wood started to split. I'm looking for something that's right in front of me. So I'll still do that and it'll still go in some, but it won't go all the way through. So it could come out at some point, but you know, it finishes it off nicely. Uh, let's see, I've got a silver, right? I'll put a little bit of glue in there, which I meant to do the first time, but not sure if it would fit, and then I tried to see if it fit, and then I couldn't get it back out. There we go. Got to kind of push it a little bit. Now, if you can find ones that have a longer um, thing, a longer barrel, I don't know what they're called, then you could do that. Before I put my ribbon on, though, I'll want to make sure I do anything to the sides and back that I want to do. Um, and then I still want to decide if I even want to put a hole in these or if I want to figure out how to attach them from the back. Um, yeah, I might... We'll see. Or, ooh, or I could do over here and over here and have it come up. All right, I'm gonna try that. All right, to do that, I'm gonna want a ruler. <laughs> this should be four inches wide. It's just under, it's like three and, okay. So I'll go there. So that's at four, so right there. So two will be in the middle. And I'm still guesstimating, even though I'm using a ruler. I'm going to go there and then there. That should center it fairly well. Okay. And also, if I remember correctly, it's better to punch it from the back anyway, because you get cleaner. A cleaner, cleaner, sorry. 
it's still stuck in there the piece of wood there we go you get a cleaner cut on the opposite side than on this side I'm just centering my circle, trying to center my circle in the middle of that dot I made, hoping that they're going to be enough, at least close enough. And then I can even use, let's see, I'm using more of fabric on everything else, but I do have, is the red one in here? No, the red one's not in here. I have a red one of this somewhere. I've seen it like I've seen it five times and I thought that I put it in here but I didn't so yeah so when I find the red one of these I'll probably use that and then I've got like some gingham or something like that I can use one of these I just kind of have to cut an angle on it let's see where's the one I finished not finished almost fin the one that's closest to being finished is this one, which I just used a piece of fabric. I'm gonna sew a button there, or I could untie it and redo the whole thing. Um, so these ones still, I still think I might finish out his, his stick there if I find the right color brown, we'll see. But I'll probably, add, so I wanna, I'm not sure if I wanna add the heat embossing to everything or not or some of them I might want to do just white for the snowflakes he gets kind of lost I gotta figure out what to do with him so um, and because they're gifts I can use the Rendale napkins and so yeah these are the ones I made the other day they still need their ribbons and stuff and maybe a little heat embossing because it just adds a little sparkle and fun so that's good all right so yep i figured out how to do with him his circle you know his hanging thing without messing up his hat and her <laughs> let's see do we dare see if i do it on the front if i do it on the back i'm gonna go right through her bow, bow here i think all right good now i can go through the back now that i have a mark of where it, now that I have a mark of where I can go, I can go through the back so that there's a cleaner hole on this side. Don't know why it's cleaner that way, but it is. And then I'll probably edge these, maybe with the gold or maybe with something else. And the backs actually are okay, unless I don't want them bright, I could just put some paper on the back. Um. Yeah, I've got plenty of, of paper and stuff left that I can play with to put on the back. That, or, like, if you don't have gel plate prints, you don't have to use gel plate prints. You can use music paper. You can use your, um, oh, the scrapbooking paper. Um, and then if you don't have wood, that's okay. Uh, you can get a piece of cardboard or some file folder or cardstock and just kind of get your shapes and glue them together. You could even use your die cut machine to get the shape you want. The shapes don't matter. These are four inches about, but they don't have to be that big. They can be a little smaller. I probably wouldn't go bigger. <laughs> these feel really big. Like these are like for the bottom of the tree, you know. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Let's see, you can use baker's twine. You can use ribbon, lace, piece of fabric. Oh, I'm gonna probably use some of these um, wood beads. Um, let's see if I can find, oh, this might be nice with her, oh, except it goes the wrong direction. All right, well, let's try this for now, if I can get the string off of there. So, if I can get this through here, just trying to take in the corner, I did it with a needle before. And I might have to do it with a needle again. So, whoops. I'm just gonna, <laughs> gonna make a really sharp. I'm gonna cut it so that I get a really sharp angle there. 
and then I have my book binding needle here and I'm just putting it through a little bit and then I can bring that through like that is how I do that and then probably could do that with the beads too huh except for I've got two sets of beads to go through I mean two I want both of the I don't know what would you do how would you do that <laughs> How would you get fabric through a bead? That's, I've never really thought about it much. Because I need to get, I have gesso all over my hands right now and that is making it difficult to do things. Also, I'm 50 and I can't see <laughs> very well. Especially at night, it's at night now. It's dark outside. My husband will be back from the food pantry pretty soon actually. All right. Let's try this one. Well, anyway, you get my point, right? <laughs> get what I'm trying to do here? I could even take a uh, paper clip. Do I have a paper clip? No. And bend it to get it through there. I don't know. How, would, how do you get two pieces of fabric through a bead? I wanted to see what it would look like. Almost, almost, there we go, because I thought that might be cute, and then it holds the bead, I mean, holds the fabric, I can fix the fabric too. You know, when I don't have my gesso in my hands, it'll be a little bit easier. So, it would hold the fabric, and then you could even tie a knot above that, so I figured like two or three beads, or even one bead. Or whatever I think this one will work better though and then you can have it so ready to tie on the tree or you can do it like I did the other one and tie it like this and just get it really tight and cut off your edges and you're ready to hang it on the tree so yeah I hope you got some good ideas. I know that some of you might have some wood pieces in your stash and you're like, what do I do with them? Well, now you have some ideas of what you can do with them. I hope. So have a delightful day. Love you guys.